Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 8 September 2018. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about the company and how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, in today's topics, we will look at oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. When swing trading stocks, we like to trade in the direction of the market. We will look at broad markets direction using NASDAQ and NYSE market break and technical analysis of four broad market ETFs. In addition to aligning our trades with the market's direction, we like to align it with the industry strength as well. We will study industry strength using scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may review some of the recent trade ideas shared in Traders Forum and look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis with US oil, the oil ETF. We are looking at it using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this template at a glance template because this template helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge of the chart in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart, the backdrop candle color turned from cyan, that was the color one week ago, to magenta. That is, it turned from bullish to bearish, and we have a bearish engulfing candle in this week. In the daily chart, price was near the upper boundary lines at the close of previous week. I had mentioned that is too extended for us to take any long trade. That was a good idea on Tuesday, that was the first trading day of the week. US oil displayed the bear release signal and from there it dropped for all the four days. On Friday, it closed near value area, it opened lower but closed at a higher price, close near the high of the day. There is no swing trade entry opportunity right now in US oil. If it starts to go up next week, gives us a cyan color candle in the daily chart, then it may give us a go with flow trend following long trend opportunity. Gold ETF GLD Gold dropped for many weeks. For last three weeks, the backdrop candle color in the weekly chart has turned yellow. This week ended with a mixed shape candle, a hollow body but a long upper tail. That shows indecision in gold's price move. 
from the daily chart the indecision is clear from the fact that price is inside a triangle pattern formed by resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom gold's direction will not be clear until it comes out of this triangle pattern and we may stay away from taking directional trades until then from commodities analysis we move on to market breadth analysis market breadth helps us decide the market's direction every week we study this market breadth using nasdaq composite index and nyse composite index both using weekly charts because this study is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval it is to be used more for longer term investment decisions not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading in the weekly chart nasdaq drop and it displayed a bearish headwind signal price is near a memory support line in the weekly chart the internals for nasdaq all of them decline new high low advanced decline and up down volume new high low closed above zero of our advanced decline and up down volume closed below zero NYSC is continuing to move in a narrow range for many weeks one week ago it ended with a bearish shape candle that is with upper tail and this week it pulled back a little bit from there NYSC also is not very far from the support memory trend line NYSC internals all drop and all of them closed below zero looking at the candle chart patterns and at the internals we have to conclude that over longer term both nasdaq and nyc are in uptrend they will continue to be in uptrend until this memory trend lines are broken for this specific week both the indices pulled down little bit but not so much to hurt the uptrend of the market the internals in this week are bearish all six of the internals declined and five of them closed below zero overall markets are in uptrend this week specifically is bearish let us see if the market etfs paint the same picture s&p 500 etf spy in the weekly one week ago it made a new all time high this week it pulled back little bit backdrop color changed from cyan to neutral color yellow in the daily chart one week ago i mentioned that price was close to the upper boundary lines that was too high to try to take any long trade that was a good idea because price pulled back little bit it is still in uptrend it is near memory support line if next week it starts to go up again gives us a cyan color candle that may give us a trend following long trade setup nasdaq etf qqq qqq also made a new all time high one week ago this week it reversed it has displayed a bearish headwind signal however price is close to the support memory line in the daily chart one week ago it was close to the upper boundary lines over extended on tuesday the first trading day of the week it displayed a bear release signal and since then it dropped on friday it closed 
right at the memory support lines. Friday's candle shape was bearish, color was also bearish. We have to see next week if price goes back up from the memory support line or continues to go down from here. Right now, there is no swing trade opportunity in TPT. Dow Jones Industrial ETF, DIA, in the weekly chart, last week we had a mixed shape candle, hollow body but long upper tail. This week the same indecision is continuing. The color is neutral, yellow, and the shape is indecisive with both upper as well as lower tails. In the daily chart, last Friday, price was close to the upper boundary lines. From there, price moved practically sideways. On Friday, also we had an indecisive shape candle. Price closed just at the memory support line. There is no swing trade opportunity in DIA also this week. Russell 2000 ETF IWM. Last week it made a new all time high. This week it reversed and it displayed a bearish headwind signal. In the daily chart, price was very close to the upper boundary lines on last Friday. This Tuesday, it displayed a bear release signal and from there price dropped. In the daily chart, it is continuing to be in the uptrend. The weekly candle color turned magenta. So even if daily turns cyan on Monday or Tuesday, it is unlikely that we will have a trend following long trade setup in IWM. At the same time, there is no short trade opportunity also because it is in an uptrend in the daily chart. What is the message from these four broad market ETFs? All of them are continuing to be in uptrend. Price pulled back little bit. However, that didn't hurt the uptrend of any of these four ETFs. Several ETFs displayed bearish headwind signal. However, there is no short trade setup in any of them. Instead, if price starts to go back up next week, some of these ETFs may give trend following long trade setup. The broad market indices as well as the ETFs are showing that the market is continuing in an uptrend. Let's see if the sector industry analysis points to the same strength. Every week we study sector performance across four weeks. The red bar represents performance of this week. The green bar represents performance of one week prior to the red bar. And the blue bar represents performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together, they represent four weeks or about one month of performance. This week, nine of the 11 sectors declined to show a bearish picture at the sector level. The only two sectors that went up were utilities and consumer staples, both of which happened to be defensive sectors. Out of the 11 sectors, 9 are showing significant flip-flop between review periods in the heat map. All except energy and materials. Energy and materials are remaining bearish over recent periods. All the others are showing flip-flop. This up-down, up-down sector move is probably a warning to avoid taking many new directional positions in the market. Such flip-flop was highlighted in previous market roundups as well. Market is bullish over longer period 
However, this week sector performance is clearly bearish. As I have mentioned several times earlier, market level and sector level are too broad. To identify trade opportunities at the right moment, we need to start our drill down from the industry level. Let us see if we could find such optimal trade opportunities using Q industry analysis. Best performing industries. We are looking at the 10 best performing industries of this week. We are looking at their 5 days and 10 day scores. You can see for many of them, the 5 days and the 10 day scores are at approximately the same levels, showing that the industries were strong one week ago itself and you could start to look for buy opportunities in them. Laser products is one such industry. It was strong one week ago and it is strong in the current week as well. AOBC in this industry is optimally valued. It went up by more than 50% this week. AOBC was supported by memory support line in the daily chart and it had given a trend following go with flow long trade setup on 27th August that turned out to be extremely profitable. The massive up move started from support memory and stopped at the resistance memory on the daily chart proving the effectiveness of the memory line in deciding trade entry as well as trade exit. Let us look at Q edge. Have a look at the sectors. Then look at the best performing industries. Look at laser product and then drill down into AOBCs, fundamentals and then technicals to see how you could enter this very profitable long trade in AOBC using Q360 degrees analysis. QA sector scorecard and heat map. Magenta represents weakness and cyan represents strength. We can look at the five days period to see which sectors were strong and which sectors were weak in this week. Clearly, energy, infotech, healthcare were weak and utilities, consumer staples, financials were strong. From the heat map, you can see that energy is remaining weak over many review periods and so is true for materials. Other than these two sectors, all the other sectors are showing flip-flop that is changing color from cyan to magenta to cyan again. Infotech changed color here from cyan to magenta and then cyan again. Healthcare, cyan, magenta, cyan. Consumer discretionary, cyan, magenta, cyan, magenta, cyan, so on and so forth. This flip-flop is not making it easy to take directional trades and to hold on to the trade. At the same time, swing traders can always find opportunities where they can take a position with low risk that is stop loss is narrow and quickly book profit at predefined profit targets. You could take several such trades using Q analysis as we will see shortly. Q industry scorecard and heat map. Q system shows the strong industries of the week using cyan color over 5 days period that is 1 week period. Laser products is the strongest industry of the week. Let us drill down. AOBC is a stock that is optimally valued. You can see that instantly 
from the cyan color in the valuation column. The EPS growth columns are showing that it had significant acceleration in earnings growth in the latest quarter. AOBC also has a short squeeze potential that is shown by cyan color in the short squeeze column. Percentage 5 days column is showing that this week it went up by more than 50 percent. Let us look at AOBC using Q charts. AOBC using at a glance template. In the weekly chart, price was near this memory support line from where it went up sharply and it closed right at the weekly memory resistance line. In the daily chart on this day, 27th August, we had a cyan color candle. Before that, price had gone up from the memory support line, came back to the memory support again, created a higher low and then gave us a cyan color candle. That was a signal to take trend following go with flow long trade setup. From there, price went up sharply. In the daily chart also, price stopped at the memory resistance line. Here we could take the trade from near the memory support line both in the weekly as well as in the daily chart and book profit, very large profit, almost 50% at the memory resistance line both in the daily and the weekly chart. This shows the effectiveness of the memory support resistance lines and how they can be used to enter trades as well as to book profit. The stock is still optimally valued. The industry is the strongest. The weekly candles are quite strong as well. Under such circumstances, Q traders will like to book partial profit and hold partial position to try to let profit run. Back to the best performing industries, restaurants is another best performing industry this way. These two stocks EAT and BLMN both broke out of memory resistance this way. Both of them are optimally valued. Both displayed bullish headwind signals at the very bottom. Using the Q headwind signals, one might take buy positions with minuscule risk in these stocks. Let's look at restaurants on Q scorecard and then drill down into EAT and BLMN. Restaurants is a very strong industry for many review periods. We have cyan color across many review periods. Let's drill down. EAT and BLMN. Both of them are optimally valued. Cyan color in the valuation column. BLMN is also showing robust earnings growth. EAT has earnings growth as well. Both of them have robust earnings quality shown by cyan color in the earnings quality column. In this week, EAT went up by 9.5% and BLMN went up by 4%. Let's look at their technical charts. EAT in the weekly chart, we had multiple weeks with long lower tails and price was also near the memory support line. In the daily chart, EAT displayed a bullish headwind signal right at earnings time. From there, price went up, tried to retest the level where bullish headwind appeared. And then this week it went up sharply.
at the right edge on Friday, it broke above the memory resistance line. Looking at the trend line support in the weekly chart, the long lower tail candles in the weekly chart and the bullish headwind signal in the daily after earnings, you could take a very low risk buy position at the very recent low of the stock. And by now, you have significant profit in the trade. As the industry is strong, fundamentals of this stock are strong and the technicals are strong as well. You might book partial profit and hold on to partial position trying to let profit run. BLMN, another student's industry stock, BLMN displayed bullish headwind in the weekly chart as well as in the daily chart. You could probably take a long position using the bullish headwind or using the cyan color candle, a possible go with flow trend following setup candle that appeared after a few more days. At the right edge on Friday, it has broken above the memory resistance line. If you enter the trade using the bullish headwind signal or using the first sand color candle, then you could probably book partial profit on Friday and hold on to partial position trying to let profit run. If you didn't take a long position earlier, you might look for a suitable low risk buy opportunity in the coming days. Both these stocks EAT and BLMN have strong fundamentals, are in strong industries and the technicals are strong as well. These are the stocks where we prefer to take long positions aligning forces from all the levels industry fundamentals and technicals in our favor. These are the trades we call 360 degree trades. From best performing industries, we move to the worst performing industries. In casinos and gaming industry, WYNN -N -N, is medium valued with slowing earnings growth in recent quarters. When reversed down from the watermark level around 151, where price gap down after earnings on 2nd August. This week, on 4th September, we gave a trend following go with flow short setup on the daily chart that hit profit target by Friday. Let's look at the worst performing industries from Q scorecard. Locate casinos and gaming, drill down to win, and then look at its fundamentals and technicals. In Q scorecard, the worst performing industries of the week are shown using magenta color over 5 days period. Casinos and gaming is showing magenta color over many review periods, that is, it is weak for a long time. Looking at that weakness, you could start to look for short opportunities. Let's drill down. When the yellow color shows that in terms of valuation, it is medium. The quarterly earnings are still positive. However, it is deteriorating from 180% to 85 percentage to 29 percentage. This is sharp deceleration in earnings growth. Let's look at the stocks Q charts. When it has dropped significantly from the high that was reached near $200. This was last earnings period. At that time, price gap down to around 151. 
from there price went down little bit tried to recover came to this watermark support level which turned into resistance price also came into multiple memory resistance lines and then it displayed a magenta color possible trend following short trade setup candle this way from there price dropped sharply by friday the stock gave much more than the risk taken and at least partial profit could be booked holding on to partial position to try to let profit run few traders would prefer to hold on to partial position in this case because the stock is weak in terms of earnings growth decelerating earnings growth technicals are very weak we can see from the weekly as well as from the daily charts and the industry is weak as well the insurance this is the weakest industry of the week GLRE in this industry is overvalued with negative earnings growth in recent quarters as well as recent years. It gave a trend following go with flow short trade setup on the daily chart on 23rd August as well as on 31st August. Both of these trades hit the lower boundary profit target this week. Let's look at reinsurance from scorecard drill down to GLRE, look at its fundamentals and technicals. Reinsurance, worst performing industry of the week with score 1. This industry had been weak for a long time. Let's drill down. GLRE, the magenta color instantly shows that it is overvalued. And we can see negative earnings growth for the three recent quarters and negative earnings growth for the three recent years as well. Let's look at its technicals. GLRE dropping sharply in the weekly chart. On this day, 23rd August, and then again on this day, 31st August, GLRE gave us the magenta color candles. Those were the signals for taking trend following short trades. Stop would be just above the recent highs. The stops were never hit. Instead, price fell down this week, hit the lower boundary lines. That is the initial profit target for swing short trades. At least partial profit would be booked by few traders. The industry is weak. The stock is fundamentally weak and technically it is very weak. Therefore, this is again another case where few traders should prefer to book partial profit with discipline and prefer to hold partial position trying to let profit run. Accelerating industries. Every week we study the accelerating industries because they often tend to become the best performing industries in subsequent weeks. We are looking at the industries 5 days and 10 days scores. You can see that for all these industries, the 5 days scores are much higher than their 10 days scores. I found multiple South American banks. BFR, GGAL, and BMA. All of them are optimally valued. All are South American banks. And this week, these three stocks went up by between 24 to 28 percentages. These are huge gains for one week. The stocks were down recently and then they went up sharply. This may be the beginning of an up move you may keep an eye on these and similar stocks interestingly all of these three stocks displayed the unique q headwind possible reversal signals they all belong to this industry diversified banks in this industry bbt 
is also optimally valued again a south american bank bbd also gave a headwind long setup on 5th september when it reversed from memory support in both weekly and daily charts so there were many technical signals telling us to take a long trade that buy setup has already given more than the risk taken in the trade partial profit could be booked and partial position could be held trying to let profit run six of the accelerating industries are in consumer discretionary sector you may look for potential buy opportunities in these industries it should not be sector you may look for potential buy opportunities in these industries what are these six industries these are computer and electronics retail specialty stores apparel accessories and luxury goods general merchandise stores footwear and department stores let us look at diversified banks from q score card drill down to the stocks bfr ggal bma and bbd to see how they have displayed the possible reversal signal and also how you could take a very low risk by position in bbd and already book profit in that in q score card the accelerating industries are shown by cyan color in the paste column diversified banks is an industry that was weak for a long time deep magenta color very low scores and now it turned cyan so it is already strong and the strength came with every acceleration shown by the paste column let's drill down BFR GGAL and BMA all of them are optimally valued and you can see they went up by 28% 25% at 24% respectively in the current week let's look at BFR GGAL and BMA using Q charts BFR declined a lot displayed a bullish headwind in the weekly chart and also a bullish headwind in the daily chart it has recovered somewhat if it now pulls back little bit and goes up again it may give us a low risk trend following long trade opportunity ggal also declined a lot this week it displayed a bullish headwind in the weekly chart in the daily it recovered currently it is right at memory resistance you may keep an eye on the stock to see if it is able to break the resistance and go up and look for a buy opportunity if that happens bma again another bank that dropped a lot one week ago it displayed a bullish shape candle and this week it has displayed the bullish headwind signal in the weekly chart daily also displayed the bullish headwind signal and from there price is starting to go up you may look for a low risk buy opportunity in bma bbd is another stock in the diversified banks industry that is optimally valued it went up by 4% this week let us look at technical charts to see how you could take a low risk trade at the right time using q charts bbd it dropped a lot interestingly it displayed the bearish headwind signals right at the very top before the stock decline then it came to the memory support line recovered from there and came down retested the same level this week it came precisely to the memory support line if us from there the weekly chart has displayed a bullish headwind signal in the daily chart again almost miraculously bbd displayed the bullish headwind signals in the daily chart 
recovered substantially from there. Displayed a bearish headwind signal dropped from there and at the right edge it is displaying bullish headwind signals while price came to the memory support line and starting to go up from there. Using the memory supports in weekly and daily and the bullish headwinds in daily and probably also in the weekly chart at the time, you could take a long on this yellow candle putting stop just below the memory support line. By Friday, price has gone up enough to cover more than the risk distance. Few traders should book partial profit. The industry is strong, fundamentals are strong, technicals are strong as well. Therefore, this is a case where few traders would like to book partial profit with discipline and continue to hold partial position trying to let profit run. Lastly, we study the decelerating industries. These are the industries which weaken fast in this week. We are looking at the industries 5 days and 10 days scores. All of these industries 5 days scores are significantly lower than their 10 days scores. Application software is one of the decelerating industries. Snap in this industry is overvalued. It gave a series of go with flow short setups since last earnings on 8th August. All of them hit profit target in a few days. Since the go with flow setup of 15th August, Snap has declined by more than 18%. That is a huge drop, isn't it? Let's look at the decelerating industries in scorecard. Look at application software. Drill down to Snap and see how you could take the low risk short trades using Q analysis. In scorecard, the decelerating industries are shown with magenta color over the paste column. Application software was very strong earlier and now it weakened. Over 5 days, the color turned magenta. Not fully magenta yet, but the weakness is severe shown by the deceleration that is the magenta color in the paste column. This industry is opposite to that of diversified banks. Diversified banks that we discussed a while ago was very weak and then it accelerated this week. Whereas application software was very strong, cyan color earlier and now decelerated this week. In diversified banks, we looked for buy opportunities and in application software, we could start to look for short opportunity. Let's drill down. Snap. This is a stock that is overvalued, shown by magenta color in the valuation column. It declined by more than 10% this week. Let's look at its technical charts. Snap. In the weekly chart, it is magenta for many weeks. During all these weeks, you could start to look for trend following short trade setups. In the daily chart, we can see this was the earnings period. After that, price tried to go up a little bit and then on this day, 15th August, it displayed a magenta color candle. That was the first go with flow short trade setup signal. We had another opportunity to take a short trade on 28th August, this magenta color candle. Both of them gave significant profit as price dropped sharply. From 15th August, this magenta color candle snap has already declined by more than 18%. The stock is still overvalued. The technicals are very weak. The industry is weak, decelerating. Therefore, Q traders would prefer to book partial profit. 
and then hold on to partial position trying to let profit run. We discussed several stocks AOBC, EAT, BLMN in the best performing industries, WIN and GLRE in the worst performing industries, diversified bank stocks BBR, GGAL, BMA and BBD in the accelerating industries and SMAP in the decelerating industries. I would like to discuss two more stocks, Marvel, MRVL, I think it's a semiconductor industry stock that gave a go with flow short setup on 5th September and that trade hit profit target in one day. And also I would like to discuss Mankind, a biotech stock, MNKD, it moved rapidly in last few days first going up fast and then moving down very fast as well this is an example of moves that didn't give any trade setup it is better to stay away from such random move stocks few traders try to avoid such stuff before discussing marvel and mankind let me summarize from the market break, we saw that market is continuing to be in uptrend. There are many memory support lines supporting both NASDAQ and NYSE. The uptrend will continue until these are broken. The memory support lines are providing robust support. Though for this specific week, the internals are weak. The indices pull down little bit the uptrend is continuing the same picture is there in the broad market etfs as well all the broad market etfs are in uptrend though they pull down little bit several of them are also near memory support lines they will continue to be in uptrend until the memory supports are broken market is bullish what about the sectors we saw that this week most of the sectors decline nine of them decline only two sectors went up utilities and consumer staples both happen to be defensive sectors so for this specific week the sector view is bearish market is bullish sector is bearish this may be a temporary pullback we have to see how our market and sector levels are very broad when we start looking at the industry level and identify strong industries weak industries we can then drill down further find strong stocks in strong industries weak stocks weak fundamental stocks in weak industries and then look for low risk trade entry opportunities this is the Q360 degrees analysis way of finding trades where industry strength weakness, fundamental strength weakness and technical strength weakness are all aligned. Following this Q360 degrees approach, you could identify several very profitable trade setup and you may also look for potential trades in several stocks that we discussed in today's roundup. That was the summary. Let me now look at the two stocks, Marvel and Mankind. And this time, let me do a bottom up analysis. Let me start with Mankind. I'm using Mankind MNKD as the root stock in QVital. QVital allows us to do a fundamental and peer analysis of any stock in the world. Let's look at the stock's vital statistics. MNKD, it is overvalued. Valuation is in magenta color. And you can see from the yearly periods, the earnings growth is very poor as well. So fundamentally, the stock is very weak. 
it had been weak for many years. Mankind is a biotech stock. Let's look at biotech industry strength or weakness using Q scorecard. Biotech, this is one of the healthcare sector industries. You can see from the heat map that it was strong earlier, sand color, weakened in the middle, tried to go up and then weakened again. So the industry was weak, the stock itself was fundamentally weak. What about its price moves? Let's use Q charts to find it out. Mankind. It dropped a lot from the peak reached around October 2017. From here. From the daily chart, you can see it was moving in very narrow range and then shoot up sharply for one day. Next day tried to go up but reversed and for subsequent two days it continued to fall giving up almost all of the gains since the gap up opened. When the price gap up on the sand color candle and then closed up sharply. Many novice traders might have looked at the stock and thought that it is going to continue to shoot up. In spite of the fact that the industry was not that strong and fundamentally the stock was very weak. Could it be a news driven move? That is possible. Biotechs go up based on significant news that may come outside earnings period as well. However, trying to enter the trade once the news was out at the close of this Sunday candle would not be a Q trading approach because by that time the stop loss would be far away. One might wait for a pullback. The pullback has come now. The weekly is in cyan color. If now price starts to go up, that may be a time where Q traders will look for low risk buy opportunities. Usually, Q traders would avoid chasing stocks that already gapped up so much and then closed a lot higher on the sand color candle. The other stock that I wanted to discuss was Marvel. Let's analyze Marvel first using Q Vital. We can carry out the peer analysis by clicking this peers button. Marvel belongs to semiconductor industry. Let's look at the peer stocks vital statistics. The yellow color is showing that Marvel is medium valued. The EPS columns are showing that it is having reducing earnings growth in three successive quarters. Earnings growth going down from 45 percentage to 33 percentage to negative 6 percentage. These are the times one might protect profit in any existing long position by closing the position or even look for short trades. Let's look at Marvel's technical charts. Marvel, interestingly, it displayed bearish headwind signal at the very top in weekly chart at this point and again at this point, both of which resulted in significant price drops. At the right edge, price came to the memory resistance line. One week ago, it reversed from there. This week again, it tried to go up above the memory resistance line in weekly and then dropped from there. In the daily chart, in this area, it was moving in narrow sideways range. After displaying the magenta color candle here, it dropped, dropped to the lower boundary lines, confirming the downtrend. Then it tried to recover, came to value area, 
came to the memory resistance lines in Delhi and then displayed a magenta color candle here. That was on 5th September. That would be a signal to take a trend following going through short trade setup and very next day it hit the lower boundary. At least partial profit could be booked. Marvel is in semiconductor industry. The stock is fundamentally weak in terms of earnings growth. It is slowing down. Technically, it is very weak. Let's look at the industry to decide if few traders would like to try to let profit run on partial position. We can instantly recognize an industry's strength or weakness from QH or scorecard. Semiconductors is one of the infotech sector industries. It is displaying flip flop move shown by the patchy colors shifting from cyan to magenta to cyan, magenta, cyan, magenta, so on and so forth. In the current week, it turned more magenta, that is bearish. So for Marvel, the industry was spotty, turned bearish this week. The fundamentals were weak. Technically, it gave us a trend following short trade setup this week. One could take it as a 360 degree trade. As the industry is weak and also it decelerated a lot, shown by the base column, magenta color. If you took the short trade, you might book partial profit with discipline at the lower boundary level and hold on to partial position trying to get profit run. Like this, using the Q industry heat map and scorecard, vital statistics of stocks and its peers, and the Q technical chart, the unambiguous signals, you can always look for low risk, high probability trade setup in all market conditions. Looking for long positions in strong industries, strong fundamental stocks, and looking for short positions in weak industries, weak fundamental stocks. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.